Oh, frig sakes, I'm watching Robias play uh, War Thunder. You guys all see me play War Thunder. And, and guess what? War Thunder now has tanks. Um, just, like, look at this. He's driving a tank and he's totally playing War Thunder. That's exciting as frig. So now you can attack both air and land. You can you can pick him the way you want to do mass murders. It's like different. That's I don't know. I'm kind of anxious to start playing that one again because uh, if this is a permanent add-on, then frig yeah, do want. Also, I'm pretty sure I talked about this thing for my car. Uh, this is going to be awesome for when I go down south because I can plug in most of my my vapors into my car and not run off battery, run off USB power. Like uh, this uh, freaking Proto Vapor DNA 30 uses USB to charge it, and same goes for the MVP. He uses you know USB on the bottom, and you can also you know charge a cell phone off of it, which is kind of neat. And even if I want to keep it simple, stupid, uh, I can uh, run with the old uh, High Taste VV, and uh, it's got USB son of a bitch in the bottom too, so you can just like you know plug it in. Uh, That tank sucks. I need to rebuild that one. But, uh, awesome. You know what's pretty bad, though? Every time I go to Walmart, I always buy, like, well, I usually restock my, my vegetable glycerin, and, you know, I buy some junk and some kitty stuff and some puppy stuff, and I keep forgetting something I need. I need a sewing kit. I need a sewing needle. I have thread somewhere. Yeah, I have thread. You know, I got, got a lot of black thread. I don't have a friggin' needle to guide it with, and I need uh, all my Mark One Vlogging Life shirts. Uh, the armpits are broken on them, so I need to re-sew those. I keep forgetting to pick up a frickin' needle, and I know there they have like for three ninety-seven. You can buy a kit, and it has like seven needles in it, and they're pre-threaded, ready to rock, like emergency repair kits for clothing. And they got like um, red, black, blue, all different threads attached to the needles. And uh, I bought one before. But do you think I can find it and remember where I put it and stuff? I super can't. But uh, freak sakes, it sucks kind of, because I kind of, kind of like that. You know, I like the ability to uh, fix my clothes. So next time I go to Walmart, I gotta pull up and remember that uh, I need freaking needles for thread, so I can like you know fix my clothes, because having broken clothes kind of sucks. But um, we gotta head off to work soon. Frig yeah. Um, also a little bit of an update on the job front. Um, looks like uh, shit's about to hit the fan for the government. And I was chatting with Joe about this. Uh, my buddy Angry Joe has seen an episode 200 of The Vlogging Life. And I think he was also here. Yeah, Oreo didn't like him that one time. Oreo versus Joe. I can't remember what episode that was. But uh, Oreo and Joe did not get along one bit. Um, well, Oreo just, he randomly chooses, right, who he likes and who he hates. And, uh, he's kind of a dick like that. But, uh, whatever. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Um, but anyway, uh, the friggin', um, we are chatting about the whole work scenario. And, uh, he basically says that the reason why the company is getting sold for next to fuck all, which is six million dollars, despite the fact that it's worth a lot more, is because of all the union integration like we have literally four unions currently fighting gov about this sale because the sale is complete horseshit and the unions know it and um, they want something done about it so what they're gonna get done is uh, try and get this vetoed but uh, if something happens that it doesn't get vetoed and it goes through looks like the unions are fighting to get us everything so that's going to be pretty interesting to see how this pans out. I still have a feeling that uh, nothing's going to happen. We're still going to have jobs to go through. Gov's going to keep us and life will go on as normal and I won't be moving and I'll be living here for a while yet. But you never know. You never know the way she go, you know. But uh, frig yeah, it's kind of dickered. Kind of dickered. And it's really stressful and it kind of aggravates you. But it's one of those things where you just got to go day by day and, uh, you know, plan for the future but live for the now. You can't let it get to you too much because if you do, then you'll let it control you and you'll be a nervous wreck and you will probably give yourself some stomach ulcers and other awesome ailments. 
and we don't like that kind. So, any hoozle. I need to get ready because it's uh, 3.26 now, so we got to get off to work. So, without further ado, let's pack up some shit and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, buddy. Alright, one thing I'm doing is I'm not wearing the uh, red jacket anymore because it's way too much jacket. I just want to make sure I cleared everything out of the pockets and I don't have anything in there. But I'm going to get to work tonight and go, ah, shit, you know, ah, shit. So, I got my keys. Those go in the pocket with my phone. I also got that, uh, oh geez. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna sneeze. No, nope, we're good. Oh, freak sakes. Thought, thought we were gonna explode there for a minute, but no, no, we're good. We're good. But I got that, uh, Sagret thing to USB so I can hook it up in my car and have, uh, two USB ports. It says it's two amp if you use one, one amp if you use both. And uh, the cigarettes can only take 500 milliamps each, so it's got plenty of power to charge me cigarettes. See what I mean by it's windy outside right now? Son of a bitch, I forgot to close my window. Right back. Last thing I need is for us to get like a tsunami rainstorm. I'm just gonna leave it open a little bit to keep the air flowing. Last thing I need is for us to get a super rainstorm and that mess to uh, get into the house. Because that would be the opposite of glorious. Anyway, let's get the frig out of here. Go to work, get this shift over with, and then uh, a couple more days and the weekend's here. Yeah, buddy. Well, it works. It's got a light, so that's kind of cool. Well, let's plug it in one of the darts, see what happens. Well, it works awesome. Fuck, I need to clean up my car, but yeah, works awesome. Totally charges it and things. I'm not going to use it on this right now, but uh, it's nice to know that I can... I can eat chooch and run off car power rather than battery power. Frig yeah! I am however going to use it to charge my phone because it's nearly dead. So uh, yeah, that's alright. Anyway, let's get you guys on the mount and uh, let's get off to work. It's almost 3.40. Frig shakes. Yeah, I was chatting with uh, Angry Joe last night at work there. and That's when he talked about the whole nonsense of uh, why they're getting rid of the ONTC, or the ONTC, why they're getting rid of uh, the company I work for for so friggin' cheap is mainly because of all the union's involvement and the money it's going to cost just to, you know, not screw us over and stuff if when they fire us. Because like I said, you know, when Bell buys us, they might need network control people for our, for our NOC. They're probably going to keep the NOC in order just to maintain all the fiber lines and because that's where, like, that's like the main hub uplink is up there, and the secondary is here in North Bay. But uh, they're probably going to keep those guys working, and they're going to keep all the NSTs working, the network service technicians. But as far as a help desk goes, you know, they got their uh, their Alibaba's in friggin' India there. They, they got those guys, and they're all work from home technicians, I do believe. Cause sometimes you call those places and you hear kids screaming in the background. And it's like, wow, this is like super pro, super pro. You know, I love calling a place and hearing some kids fighting in the background when it's supposed to be like a professional business. It's freaking mint, you know. Some people pay good money for that kind of service, I guess. I don't know. But um, they're not going to need any customer service reps or internet help desk dicks because they're going to have all that. And as far as intercompany uh, stuff goes, because we also deal with intercompany bullshit. Well, there will be no company to intercompany with because the ONTC is going off on its own and chances are they're going to grab our IT members, at least a couple of them, maybe like all of them or something, who knows, and they're going to put them in the, uh, in the ONTC so they can maintain the computers on that side and then they won't need us anymore. So, and judging from what the unions are saying, they're fighting to get us everything, like the best possible scenario that could happen they want it that if we lose our jobs we're gonna get our severance pays properly and it's gonna be glorious and you know we're not gonna stress and have to run away and, and join the circus so that's a good thing because I wouldn't do well in the circus I don't like heights and elephants are fucking jerks so I, I really can't do the circus you know but, um, yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting to see what comes of this. Uh, I probably haven't done an update in a while, so I figured I'd mention it because every once in a while I come across the comments and 
is the odd person who's like, well, what's going on with your job? What's going on with your job? Well, you also got to keep in mind that this is a government sale. And one thing that's consistent about all countries is governments work about as fast as a one-legged turtle on a crutch. So they say they're going to do something like that. We've known about this sale since 2011, 12, somewhere around there. I think it was March 2012 when I first found out about it and then I, I told you guys. But uh, we didn't know who the buyer was until recently. So that's why now it's becoming a seriously hot topic for, for me to talk about. And like there's a lot more information I have on the whole subject, but I gotta only talk about the stuff that's been leaked to the newspapers. Because if I talk about stuff that's been leaked to the members, then the wrong people can find out about it, i.e. the politicians that I despise. So, you know, the less they know the better. They don't realize what the frig's going on on the inside and uh, how Johnny Dukakis they're about to get. But, uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. Holy shit, guys, I'm down to 14.3 liters per 100 kilometers. The car's getting better mileage all of a sudden. Must be because it's warming up out there. I know the first time I take this thing on the highway, the mileage is going to drop down to, uh about 10.7 to maybe 9.8 somewhere in that that vicinity because that's usually what happens with this car because it's fucking dicked like that well it likes to go on the highway but then when i get back into town it'll climb up to about 11.3 and it'll stay there it's just winter time operations really kick the shit out of it right now i'm just vaping on some uh caramel macchiato macchiato or whatever it's called it's not too bad not too bad but freak sakes it's really, really uh, in your face strong with the coffee flavors. So it makes me choke every once in a while. <clears throat> oh shit. So yeah. But uh, anyway, I was chatting with Joe about that last night and then he was telling me about his car. His daily driver is a 2001 or two, can't remember, uh, Saturn SL. The uh, Super Coupe there, the two door, three door, I should say, little, uh, Saturn car with the 1.9 liter. The last of the Saturn engines before GM took over and put all EcoBoosts and our EcoBoosts, EcoTechs and everything. Son of a bitch! Pothole Central! But um, he uh, had some tie rod end links going on him and some bushings because that's basically the same thing I have going on this apparently even though now they're not really making any noise uh, so he went and shopped around and he found a really good deal for his entire front end and uh, over at this place in town called Maslak they sell uh, the whole front end like your control arm your a-arm bushings all the bushings are in it everything tie rod end links it's like a complete freaking kit ready to go you just bolt your ball joint to it and you're off to the races for like $130 a piece the whole kit everything just bolt your ball joints onto it fucking drop the car done you know brand new front end and the best part about it it's all Moog lifetime warranty Moog parts and I'm like fuck so sure enough right and this is what pissed me right off I go to the Maslak homepage I'm like well, let's see what it would cost for that same operation for the G6 like if I'm gonna keep the car and drive it Let's put some good parts in the front end and uh, make them last. So I go on Maslach's homepage and go to bring up the catalog only to find out they don't have a parts catalog. They tell you, like, you go into suspension and all that, and it's like, we have quality suspension parts for multiple manufacturers. You can get top of the line. You can get cheap economy. It's your call when you're shopping at Maslach. And it's like, freak sakes, like... Why can't you guys have an actual parts list? Like, it's on a computer, because like you call them up and you say, yeah, I have a 2005 Pontiac G6, uh, 3.5 liter, and I want to get the front, right, and left control arm complete. And they, you can hear them typing on the computer and clicking a mouse and shit, so it's already in the system. So why not just make that database available to the public? It, it wouldn't be that hard, I don't think. You know, Canadian son of a bitch can do it. So why the frig can't Maslach? It doesn't make a friggin' lick of sense. But no, nope, no, nope, you gotta call them. So pretty much the same thing for this car, about 150 bucks a side. So 300 bucks and I can have a fully brand new front end. Uh, brand new control arms, brand new everything. Uh, all I'd have to do is uh, get some monkey to toss all the shit into the car. 
Uh, I watched a couple videos last night on how to do it. Only problem is, is, like I said, my jack doesn't work anymore. I gotta talk to a guy about a horse and see about getting that thing fixed. Uh, I think the seal blew, and I don't know exactly how to replace the seal on a hydraulic pneumatic piston thingamajig. So I gotta talk to some people who know how to do that and get that done so I can have my jack back. Cause honestly, I don't know why I'm paying $90 every time I go get an oil change that just lubes. Fuck, I should be doing this on my driveway. Oil changes are not that difficult, you know. It's not exactly rocket science. Pull the cork, let the fucking juice bleed out, and then put the cork back in, and then replace your friggin' oil filter. Make sure you don't double, uh, uh, with double gasket it. Make sure the gasket comes off with the old filter. Put the new filter on, you know, load it up with 4.758 liters of, uh, of uh, friggin' oil. Start it, check it, you know, make sure there's oil at, at, in the good zone. And then uh, you're off to the races for another four or five months or however long it takes you to make that oil soupy. So I honestly have no idea why. And I've already done the Trans Am like three times. So I, I know what I'm doing when it comes to an oil change. It's not difficult. I've never done it on this car because while this car was under warranty, I just didn't really... That's a weird Suzuki. It had like a Ford front end on it. But uh, I've never done this car here. So the only difference is, is I'd have to find out where the drain plug is and... Because usually you want to angle the car, I think, or some sh I don't know, frig. I was always told to uh, jack up the side that doesn't have the oil plug a little higher than the spot. Shit. From the side that does, and that way there, you're uh, guaranteed to get all the oil out. And uh, one thing not to do is what that dude did on fucking YouTube. He wanted to get all the used oil out of his Honda Civic, so what did he do? He took the friggin' drain plug off the bottom and fired up the car. And it came flying out of the car like a super soaker pulling the trigger after 35 pumps, you know? And yeah, it got all the oil out, but uh, if there's no oil in the engine, what the frig is lubricating your pistons and other things that are moving around in there freely, you know? You kind of sort of maybe do need a little bit of lube in there, so just let the thing drip out on its own. Oh yeah, and one step I forgot to mention was warming up the car. Um, I remember when I first did the Trans Am, I didn't warm up the car and she took forever to leak out. And I may have added new oil and there's some old oil in there as well. But the second time I took her for a good rep snot, that's back when I was smoking, so I fucked off to the reserve, got myself a, um, a carton of darts, and then came back home, pulled her halfway into the garage, jacked up the front end, and then dropped the oil and put new oil into her. And you know, you can buy new oil like I said, right now, crappy tire, Mobile One, a full five liter jug, which I don't need the whole five liters, but whatever. You could pick that up for like fucking 30 bucks. You know, 30 bucks in your time versus $90 and uh, their time. And you ask for full synthetic motor oil and what they give you is whatever the frig they want. So, you know, you, you could be getting full synthetic, but you don't know. You never know. It's pretty shitty. But chances are I'm probably going to get this thing done over at the Just Lubes like I've been doing before I, uh, because I'm thinking I might go down for May 2 for a weekend down to Pugs or down to Blokes. Um, we're going to go visit Pug even though the tractor race is the weekend after because May 2 for is not May 24. What the fuck was that? That was a different sound. Anyway, um, yeah, May 2 for a weekend is actually the 17th or the 19th, but his tractor race races are on May 24th which is not the 2-4 long weekend, which is kind of dicked, but it is what it is. So we're just going to go down there, going to hang out for a bit, and I guess I don't need to fix his computer now because Junkstar went out there and apparently he got it all schmaggled, so now it's actually working properly, so right on. So one less thing for me to do, that's a bonus, and uh, I don't know, maybe we'll talk shop or... I don't know, maybe you'll teach me how to weld better because I'm not too bad now, but I could use a lot more fucking practice. But then again, using his welder versus using my welder, that wouldn't be right because he's got that super high power. Holy shit. What the hell's really going on? But uh, yeah, it's windier than fuck out right now. And uh, that's quite the sound. I don't know what the hell that is, but probably water running off the tree and pounding on the roof of my car maybe who knows but anyway people it's 355 i got five minutes to get into the office so i'm going to call it quits for now and i'll talk to you guys later so hopefully you enjoyed this vlog and if you did click that like button any questions comments concerns you know where to stove them and until next time people keep on vlogging <laughs>